last time we talked about residues, which is a quantity that we can associate with an isolated singularity. And I showed you a method of finding that residue that is usually used for essential singularities. Today, we're going to go over a method of finding residues for a pole singularity. This is complex analysis by a physicist, and let's discuss how we find residues with method number two, which is mainly used for poles. And so here is how we do it. We use this formula. This is called the pole residue formula, or at least I call it the pole residue formula. And this pole residue formula is a little bit complicated. So let's walk through it very quickly. First, we need to be able to identify the order of the pole. So if let's say we have the following function here, one on z plus one, this is a pole of order one. Let's say we have one on z plus one quantity squared. Well, that's a pole of order two. And we're gonna need to be able to identify that so that we can plug that into n here. Then otherwise, we're just going to take the limit times the derivative of this whole thing right here multiplied by our function that we're trying to find a residue for. But remember, we can still use method one where we expand our function into its Laurent series and then just find the c minus one coefficient. But this is really best seen in some examples. So let's do that. Here we have the following function, one on z squared minus four. Well, we can further simplify this function into one on z minus two times z plus two just by factoring. And here you can see we have singularities at z equals plus or minus two. So therefore, we're going to have two different residues for each one of these different values. Let's use our formula here to find one for z equals two. So we'll take the limit as z goes to two of z minus two, because this is a pole of order one, on z minus two times z plus two. Here our z minus two terms are going to cancel out and so we're just left with the limit as z goes to 2 of 1 on z plus 2. And so that's just going to equal 1 fourth. Let's do the same thing now for the other singularity at z equals minus 2. Again, we still just have a pole of order 1. So we're just going to take z minus z naught. In this case, z naught is negative 2. So we're going to get a, the limit as z tends to negative 2 of z plus two on z minus two, z plus two. And now the other terms are going to cancel, so our z plus two terms are going to cancel, and we're gonna be left with a negative one fourth. And again, just like with the first method, I want to emphasize that before we didn't know anything about these singularities other than that they gave us problems. Now we have an associated value with each one of these singularities called the residue. Let's look at another example. Here we have a pretty basic looking function, two per z. Well, this is by definition a pole, so let's try method two. This clearly has a singularity at z equals zero. So to find the residue at z equals zero of our function, we'll just take the limit as z goes to zero of z minus zero, which is just z times two per z. Well, this is just, these z's are going to cancel out. And so we're just gonna be left with two. There's no z to take to zero, so this is just two. But really, this can be done with method one. If we try to expand our function in a Laurent series, well, we're only going to get this one term, so we're just going to get f of z is equal to 2 per z, which, hey, recall that this is 
has our c to the minus one term here. So we can really just take a look at this and see that the residue of this function at z equals zero is just two by method number one. And so with both of these methods, we get the same residue, which is great because that shows that both of these methods work to find the residue at this point. But this further illustrates that we should use the easier method when possible. So you may get really good at expanding things into Laurent series and then finding the C minus one coefficient. But for poles or for some of these poles, it's not really practical. It'll take a very long time. Method two is probably the better choice for that. But method two is really only for poles. So I really wouldn't try to use method two for something like an essential singularity. But now let's do a little bit more complicated of an example. Here we have the function z divided by z minus two quantity squared. Well, now we're going to need to use our formula for a pole of order two. So let's plug this into our formula and see what we get. So the residue at z equals two of our function is equal to the limit as z goes to two because the one on two uh, the one on two minus one factorial is just one on one factorial, so that's just one. We don't change anything there. Okay, but now we have our derivative d d z of z minus two quantity squared times z per z minus two quantity squared. These are going to cancel out and we're just going to be left with the following limit as z goes to two of d by dz of just z. Well that's one and so this residue is just going to be one. Now this one's a little bit more complicated because we have a pole of order two, but we could do this for a lot of different, you know, poles, poles of an increasing order. And that's why with this method, we generally want to use this for poles. We don't want to use it for essential singularities. We don't want to use it for removable singularities, although that one is very straightforward and you can just say that for a removable singularity, the residue is zero. But either method one, which we discussed in our previous video, and which I'll link in the description down below, is sometimes easier, and sometimes method two is easier. Both of these methods are incredibly important to finding these residues, and these residues are incredibly important because they give us a bit of knowledge attributed with an isolated singularity, whereas before, we only knew that the isolated singularity gave us a problem. And in our next video, we're going, I'm going to show you exactly why these residues are so incredibly important. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if I made any mistakes in this video, be sure to check the description or the top pinned comment to see if I made any mistakes that I recognized. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.